football season is just around the corner. We're excited. UConn's got a week zero matchup against Utah State. So joining us this season, we're going to have Jackson Mitchell on the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Before we begin, just want to mention that today's episode is brought to you by the Boneyard Huskies Club. Boneyard Huskies Club empowers athletes by helping open doors to opportunities while providing UConn fans with access to exclusive dialogue, community, and rewards. To learn more, visit BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. That's Husky with a Z, BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. All right, Jackson, we're on to on to week zero here and getting ready for the season. But before we dive into to what to expect this year, I want to look back and help the, the listeners here get to know you a little bit more. I want you to think back, what was it about UConn th- that appealed to you when it was time to make your your choice about where to go to school and how you ended up at, in stores? Um, yeah, for sure. I think the biggest thing, obviously, I'm from Connecticut. I've been here uh, 21 years now, so... I'm, I'm homegrown. This is my home state. I've, I've watched them play um, for a while. Like I remember watching them play in the Fiesta Bowl and that kind of thing. So I've always followed UConn, not only football, but basketball as well. Uh, but as for like recruiting and stuff, uh, I, I only had one. This was my only FBS off- offer out of uh, college. And I really wanted to go FBS and play, be able to play at the highest level because I knew I could compete at that level. Um, so that was another huge decision in, in, in coming here. And, and I knew I had a chance to play early and, and become a good player. Looking back at, at last year, I know last year probably had to have a, a lot of ups and downs for you. You know, personally, you know, you led the team in tackles, your top tackler in the nation. But, you know, again, there was a, a coaching change made in the middle of the season. It was a tough year coming off a year where you didn't play football at all. The school didn't play the season before because of COVID. What was last year like for you uh, and just going through all those ups and downs of the season? Uh, I think in the moment, it's definitely frustrating uh, because you, 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 I love this game so much. And I want to have success as a team and see my teammates have success as well. And when we're struggling, it's definitely hard to, to come in every day and keep grinding and keep getting after it, trying to win some games, even though uh, they're not coming at times. But looking back on it now, I think uh, everything kind of happens for a reason. And, and we went through a lot of adversity since I've been here as a freshman and guys, even that are older than me have been through more adversity than that um, in the years prior to when I was here. So I think that adversity is going to build us and it, it, it's helped these older guys on the team now um, see what that was like, see what those up, downs, ups and downs are like. And uh, I think now we're, we're kind of ready for anything. We're not, we're not faced by any adversity. You, you mentioned how UConn was your only FBS offer. How, how did it feel for you, given that, you know, you were kind of overlooked by the, the rest of the college football FBS level to go out and prove yourself last year and show at a national level you're, you're as good as anyone out there? Yeah, it's definitely important to me. I think my, it's something my dad always taught me was play with a chip on my shoulder, no matter uh, you know, how successful I'm having, like in high school and stuff. He always told me to play with a chip on my shoulder because you know, I, I wasn't a highly recruited guy. I wasn't the biggest, strongest guy. Uh, coming into college, I had to work for everything that I've gotten. Um, and it was a little bit of satisfaction, I guess, just, just knowing uh, the hard work has paid off a little bit. You know, I, I had yeah. found some success, but I'm not really satisfied with what I did last season. I think there's a lot of things that I can improve on and a lot of things that I'm going to improve on uh, this upcoming season. So I, I want to hear, what was the first impression of Coach Morrow when, when, when you met him for the first time? I know he came in towards the end of last season and, and hung around the team for a little bit. What, what was your first impression getting to meet him? Uh, it was definitely interesting because uh, at first I had not known that his father was was the guy that had that uh, famous <laughs> clip and stuff. So yeah. I didn't realize that was <laughs> his father. Right. I put two yeah. and two together after a little bit. Um, but he's a really good guy, and and he came in at the end of the season. We, even at uh, when we were struggling at the end of the season, he was around the team and practices, came to some games. Uh, and you know, he he, I remember him coming up to me and some of the other guys and saying like, "We're gonna we're gonna fix this. We're gonna turn this thing around. We're gonna be all right here." And, that really meant something to me because uh, there was a lot of coaches that, that didn't want this job and didn't think it was a good opportunity for them in their career. But Coach Mora, you know, he believed in this this program and he saw the potential that we have as players and in this program. And that's meant a lot to me. So, so you meet him and then you, you start to work with him. You've got spring ball night. Now you've been through fall ball. What's it been like getting to work with him in this coaching staff that, that he's assembled here? Yeah. Uh, well, the biggest thing about the coaching staff, I would say at first, I mean, they're really young and they got a lot of energy something I guess we're not used to, but I love the energy. They bring it every single practice, every single meetings. Um, you know, we're playing music at the beginning of meetings, you know, uh, on the field, they're, they're high energy. They run around, jumping around. 
which is something I really like. And I think it, everybody feeds off of that, which gives us a lot of energy just in the whole building itself. Um, but for Coach Mora, the, the biggest thing I've noticed just being able to practice with him and hear what he's got to say is like, he's a really smart football coach. And you can tell he's been around a lot of football and he, he's going to get us ready for every single situation that we're going to see on the field, every single formation we're going to see on the field. Like he's going to make sure we're ready for it. And come that game, like we're going to be prepared for any situation where he, we're going to be in. And I really, I really think that's really important for us as players. And just, I think I can tell I'm becoming a better football player and a smarter football player every time I talk to him, every time he speaks in front of the team. So taking away the, the X's and O's in, in the football schemes and all, what, how do you feel like the, the culture around this team has been built? Because I feel like when, when he took over this program, he, he made it clear that he was here working to, to fix the culture a little bit and, and take UConn to that next level or the level it used to be at when, as you mentioned, was in the, the Fiesta Bowl. And it seems like just from a fan's perspective and someone who's been seeing it from the outside, whether it was you guys going to the Pats game, you guys doing slip and slides and all that stuff, it, it, it seems like there's a new culture in stores. What's it been like uh, this past year? Yeah, definitely. I think the biggest thing that the, this is his main point when he got here was this is a brotherhood. Like we're gonna, we're brothers, we're family. We're going to hold each other accountable and we're going to have to be hard on each other at times, but we're also a, a brotherhood and, and we're going to be positive with each other and we're going to be friends. And like, this is going to be a great environment for that. Everyone's excited to come to the biggest thing he wanted was nobody to like not want to be here in the morning and not want to practice. Everybody comes in this building and they're excited to be here and they're ready to practice. <laughs> And, you know, we love each other as, as brothers and we're ready to fight for each other on the field. And that's a really important part of having a successful team, because if you got guys, you know, that, that might not get along with each other on the field, it's not going to go well. I, I know he's been big in talking about the, the Husky revolution out there. What, what does that mean to you guys within the locker room? I think it's, it's just like it's just change. Like you can see it visually. Um, just from the little things, but obviously you haven't been able to see the football part of it yet, but yeah, it's just kind of evolving this program into what the potential it's always had. You know, this is a huge school, huge sports school. Um, and it's kind of that kind of missing piece we have is football and he's trying to start that here and we have the pieces to do it, but we just got to get that going. So he's trying to turn around what we had and get rid of what we had. And it's a, it's a new era. We, I kind of call it, I call it the Mora era. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's going to be a big, it, it, for many years to come, he's, he's going to set up this program for a lot of success. What, what is the fall camp been like from your perspective? And, and how do you feel the team is as, as, you know, camp winds down, you get ready, you know, for your first game week here? I think it, it's been really competitive. I think, I mean, we have competition to every single position. We have a lot more depth this year, you know, going into the portal and having some freshmen come in. So we definitely have a lot more competition and, and it's been really competitive offense versus defense. So. You know, towards the end of camp, we kind of got sick of each other, and now that we're going into game week, so so it's better that we're in game week now. But it's definitely, I would say, competition is like the biggest thing. It was really competitive, and the coaches were really demanding of us because in order to win, have a successful season, you got to be demi- demanding of each other. And we're gonna practice hard, but I've also noticed like he kind of treats us like like NFL guys. He's gonna make sure we get our legs back. He's gonna make sure we get recovery, and he's he's taking care of us as well, even though he's being demanding. So. I- how are you feeling heading into the, this game that we've got week zero against Utah State? I know they, they had a pretty good season last year, expected mm-hmm. to be good again. Uh, how are you guys feeling heading into the game? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're obviously a good team. They won the Mountain West last year. They went 11-3 and in a bowl game and that type of stuff. Um, but I'm excited, man. I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a really good season for us. And just the guys around here are excited and ready to win and ready to show everybody like how, how hard we've been working this off season, all the work we've been putting in. Um, and just, I think we have a really good game plan. I think our coaches are really smart and they're going to make sure every detail is right. And obviously kind of have two weeks leading up to it now, because we started this week and then next week's game week. Yeah. So our game plan is going to be really sound and really every piece is going to be in. And I'm, I'm really excited. That's the biggest thing. Like I, I can't wait to step on that field because I feel like, I'm more ready than ever to play a season. Yeah, I, th- I think fans are going to be excited to hear that. Yeah. To, to, to get fans in the mood for these games as well, give me a couple guys just from being around the team and being in that locker room who have impressed you personally, you know, whether it's, you know, through spring, spring ball, fall camp here, that the fans should be on the lookout for. Like, hey, these, these guys uh, are going to show you something this year. Um, I mean, I think we got a lot of guys on de- – just to talk about defense first, we got yeah. a lot of guys on defense uh, – Durante Jones is, you know, he's probably one of the louder guys on the team and you'll be able to see that this year. He's, he's really passionate football player and he's, 
he's going to have a real big season for us. But I think it, also in the secondary, Caleb uh, Caleb is going to have a really – Caleb Anthony, my bad. Caleb Anthony is going to have a really big uh, season for us. He's, he's Just for him to be a freshman last year and come back this year, he's grown so much this offseason. Um, and then just you look at a couple of transfers. We got um, Quez, and obviously we have Swenny, who's, who's an old head now. But uh, – and Dalma on the defensive line, all these guys, like, I would say as defense, like everybody's been putting in work, and I think you sh you should expect a lot more people flying around. And maybe you don't see guys getting 16 tackles a game anymore, but but everybody is more spread out because we're all flying around making plays, getting turnovers, that type of stuff. Um, on the off offense side of the ball, I, I got to start with Nate. Like he he's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen, and he cares so much about this game, and it, it's good for me because I get to play against him every day in practice. So you know he's getting me better, I'm getting him better. Uh, and I expect a really big season from him. And I see so much. The biggest thing for me is the offensive line. Obviously, a lot of people, I think last year were kind of hard on them at, at times. But the work they put in, they, they're probably one of the closest knit groups on the team, the offensive line. They come in. They've been watching film every single day this entire offseason from spring through summer um, and, and doing their individual. And I expect them and the running backs to have a really big season. But, you know, we, our receivers are also really talented. So it's going to be hard to tell. Yeah, no, I, I think fans uh, are, are really looking forward to seeing, you know, what, what the football product is going to look like under the, this Mora era. And uh, just from talking to you here for a few minutes, I think fans are going to be really excited by what, what they're going to see. Got just a kind of a few fun, like lightning round questions here. Uh, yeah. I, I think one of the cool things about th this independent schedule that you guys have is you get to go play in some really cool places. You're playing some cool teams, um, you know, Looking back on who you bet played against, you, you, I know you were at Army last year, Vanderbilt. Where, where's been your favorite place on the road that you guys have gone so far? Um, I mean, Army was definitely one of the coolest experiences. Just yeah. being able to be on the field and seeing all those service members uh, in the stands, just packing out the stands, and they're loud, and they're going crazy during the game. And then you see, like, the helicopters and the planes flying over, which is a really cool experience. You know, they're landing on the field in the – uh, and the parachutes and stuff. Yeah. That's a, a experience I think everybody should experience. If they're not playing, at least go to see a game there because that was really cool. Yeah, and, and everyone's going to have another opportunity this year too to, to go yeah, check that definitely. out. It'll be a little more cold that game, but yeah. it'll be better. Uh, again, just getting to know the team a little bit better. Who, who's the funniest guy in the locker room? Uh, I mean, I, I, I've been thinking about this a long time. Like, I think we probably have one of the funniest teams in college football, <laughs> if I had to say that. Um, but someone like... Eric Watts is he's hilarious if All you right. just listen to him talk throughout meetings and on the sideline in practice or in the cafeteria he's he's a really funny guy but also Desmond Fogel is, is another funny guy we got on the team in terms of the this season and I know you mentioned personally yourself playing with the chip on your shoulder but do you feel like that's the attitude around this team because it seems like this program has been been knocked around when you think of what national media has said about this team mm -hmm. and it feels like this is like a good chance to to kind of refresh reset and, and move forward do you feel like this team's playing with that chip on the shoulder to prove to everyone that, that UConn's back here yeah definitely I think the biggest thing for us like coach Moore he talks about like he never looks at at the lines or like any of the betting stuff but he said for the first time he looked at it and said our over under is like two games or one game this year. And, and that kind of got everyone motivated. And then you saw his quote just yesterday yeah. where he talked about he's never been a 27 point underdog. So, yeah, we everybody in this building has a chip on our shoulder, even the, the equipment staff, the trainers, everybody like we're ready to win. We're ready to show people how hard we've been working. All right. Awesome. Well, well, Jackson, I really appreciate the time. This, this is going to be fun to do this throughout the season. Uh, yeah, best definitely. of luck to, to you and the team out at Utah state. And when, when we're talking next, we'll have some actual football that has been played to be talking about yeah. and, uh, and then look ahead to, to central Connecticut, but best of luck and uh, have a good trip out to Utah. Thank you.